you know, cause them, you know, I feel like to get confidence and try to run a little bit. Hey, what, when you're checking in these games, in this case, you, you were pretty effective right away. You are pretty efficient from three, able to get to the rim. What is it that you're trying to look to do uh, in even if it's shorter minutes that you're getting? How are you, how are you still playing your game efficiently? Uh, you know, with you know, basketball being how it is, I would kind of, you know, expect to come in every game and try to be like that. But, you know, it's not going to be like that every game. So, uh, you know, my goal is to come in and do kind of what I did today. So, uh, just anything that you know, help us win. How good? Hey, Talon. Uh, Frank told us early today that uh, you were going to get some minutes tonight uh, with AD out. How how does it affect your mindset when you know you're going to play a certain role or when you know that you're going to come in on a given night? Uh, I just try to stay, you know, ready throughout, you know, everything. Uh, not kind of knowing what role I'll play when the game starts is, you know, kind of hard. So just being able to stay ready and just come in and do what I know how to do is just, uh, you know, going to be good. Tweet, Lakers Chargers fan. James Worthy, you guys made this game worthwhile for me tonight. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Ori, thank James. You. Thanks for tuning in, man. We appreciate it. That's our that's our goal is to connect with the fans, even if it's not a great you know what? game. I'm with him. You two made my night too. Get gotcha. you. You the man. Ice cold Randy Watson up there. <laughs> All right. Out shoot him 14 to 36 from three. Bench 32 to 27, but it did not matter. Points off turnovers, the big one, 16 to 5. Earlier today, our Laker insider Mike Bresna, Bresna caught up with the Lakers general manager, Rob Polinka, to get his thoughts. The good news for the Lakers, a lot of depth on this team. And how important is that to have not just a, a quality starting five, but a strong, you know, one through 15 team, more or less? Yeah, Mike, again, that was something that was really intentional as, as, as the front office was sort of, you know, coming up with our strategy for this team. You know, just come, having come out of the bubble experience where, you know, guys had to come and go a little bit and teams had quarantine issues. Um, we knew that this year with kind of the soft bubble that we're in where teams are traveling around that we wanted to have a deep team. And uh, I think on a night, if we're missing a couple good players, we'll still be amazingly competitive because I think Frank Vogel and others at the beginning felt like this was one of the you know deeper teams in recent history. And that was intentional for sure. Rob, if I know you like I do, you're always looking for ways to make yourself better, uh, you, you know, your people around you better, uh, the players better. The trade deadline uh, still a couple months away, and of course the veterans buyout session after that typically. Do you see the team being active? Obviously the Lakers off to a great start, but there's always ways to tinker and maybe even improve, isn't there? You know, one of the things you're always doing in, in the front office is you're running scenarios just to be prepared. You know, it's I've, I've said at the beginning of the season, sometimes it feels like a, a grand chess game and you want to study the moves and study what other teams are doing. And so we're always doing, um, doing that. but. Um, at the same time, you don't want to tinker or change something that's working extraordinarily well. And so we'll be mindful of that, too. Um, we do have one open roster spot right now that at some point in the season will pro probably get use. We wanted to use the first you know, third to really see where the holes are or the needs are. Uh, but that's definitely a tool at some point that will come into play. And, you know, then you were talking about the trade deadline, too. You, you, you never know what may come your way. And. So we're, we're preparing in advance for that just to make sure we're doing all we can to defend the title. All right, uh, Brez, uh, your conversation with Rob Palenka talking about the, the new additions. Yeah, he's obviously very happy about what they've done. I mean, when you had a guy like Schroeder and Montrez, that's going to make your team better. You know, Marcus Gasol, he's not going to score 20 points and get 10 rebounds every night like he used to in Memphis. But what he does on the court with his poise, you can tell Rob Palenka really appreciates the, the new guys. And, and why not? I mean, this team has been really playing at a high level tonight, an obvious exception. I, I wonder, though, uh, and you heard him talk a little bit about the, the near future trade deadline, about two months away. And, of course, all the vets buyouts after that. He's not going to reveal, reveal his cards. Not even he knows what moves he's going to make. But I wonder if the Lakers maybe go after uh, another shot-blocking big man. Uh, you mentioned the stat earlier. Yep. They really had only one block shot till late in the game when it was yeah. irrelevant. Uh, I feel like maybe one more guy, one more big man down low. They saw that one open spot on the roster. Yeah, I think there's the one critique, at least from people, about the roster or, or a need for this Laker team, even though they were number one in defensive efficiency and they had the best record in the league up until uh, a couple nights ago. 
uh, is the fact that they lost a little bit of length and, and do they need a shot blocker and can they get one later down the road? Well, it would be nice. Yeah. You know, uh, shot blocker is a big part of their offense, you know, to be able to block a shot, keep it in play, mm -hmm. get going on the fast break, you know, it kind of altering shots. There were a lot of times last season uh, when players would drive into the paint, they wouldn't even take the shot. They would know that they were <laughs> shot blockers there. So uh, it would be something, you know, if they could find somebody that could come in and, and be consistent there, it can only help them. But the other player that I hope they can find, you know, a consistent offense for is Wes Matthews because he can shoot. Remember yeah. the one game he had the six mm -hmm. threes? They haven't found that rhythm for him yet. He yeah. sets picks and tries to step back quick. It's not quite developing yet. I'd like to see him get a little bit more consistent. I know he can do it. Uh, he's playing really hard, but he's a specialist at shooting. Uh, that could help as well. Well, we want to talk about previews to maybe NBA final. If we look at last night's game, yeah. we definitely need another big mm -hmm. because AD can handle him, but he can't do it for 48 minutes. I'm talking about Joel Embiid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we saw Marcus Gasol just too slow to guard him. So they need another big. And Trez is too short. Yeah. So if you want to have a preview to a finals, that was a perfect preview to say, we need another big, we saw it, and we they saw need it to find in, something. We saw it in Drummond, too. When Drummond would, was, would, would someone be able to argue that and say, Rob, but last year in the playoffs, they rarely used their bigs. Last year in the playoffs, they rarely had a big they went up against. Yeah. You know, the only one they had was in Denver, and he's if not really... If you're playing Philly, it's a different story. It's not a truly mm -hmm. a big. If yeah. you think about it, tell me one other big they played against in the playoffs. And actually, well, Dwight, whether, Dwight was effective against the yes, yes. Well, whether you. Yes. Whether you use them or not, you, you, you need them for when you have Just to like use Dwight. them And by the way, yeah. great in the regular season. Yeah. If, we didn't, Lakers, if we didn't have the White last, year, last right? year, who didn't play a lot of minutes, if we didn't have the White to go up against Jokic, that would have been a problem. He helped would win that problem. series. There's no doubt. No and Frank doubt. Vogel, some nice moves. He brought Mark Keith Morris in there in a couple of the uh, the playoff games to kind of mess with the other team. I think that was the Houston series. They were coming out with Robert Covington as their center. Yeah. Yes. He's all of, what, 6'7"? So, I mean, you're, you're right, Rob, when you say not a lot of brute force needed in the playoffs last season. That could change, especially if the Lakers <clears> get to the finals this season. Yeah, Rob and the staff have done an incredible job putting together this roster. And like you said, they're going to keep it close to the vest. Yeah. Maybe there's a move down the road. We shall see, but this team, pretty darn good. It's yeah. hard to go out and get better. Or it's, and, and, you know, and it's not time to panic yet, but it's just if the, if the yeah, one yeah. thing that, that's obvious is, is the shot block. It's just something to make you go, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a little. Because other teams are aware of it. They're aware of it. They're going to the 